Welcome back to Bargecraft. This week I made something really simple and beautiful. I believe you can craft this as well. And just in a few hours. It's that simple, really. Let's start by making the wings. For this you will need thick paper or some cardstock. I always try to use the cardstock from food packaging. This time I have been eating chocolate, so I'll use the cardstock from that. You can start by drawing the shape for the wings, as I did, or then you can use the templates I provide. Using the templates is only legal if you have subscribed. Once you have the right shape, and all is good, cut out the wing with any sharp blade, preferably a utility knife. But of course, kitchen knives and swords are also acceptable. This is craft after all. Now I have one wing, so I'll use it as a template for the other wing. When cutting out the wings, remember that you can make the two wings a bit different. If you use my templates, feel free to make some personal changes. After all, that's what this hobby is all about, making your own and weird crafts. Good job, now you have two wings. You can now bend the cardstock in order to make the wings look more like actual wings. Bending the tips of the wing up will look really good. Now that your wings are ready, you need to make a simple body out of XPS foam. Don't worry, if you can't find this material, you can also make it from paper or really anything, the body won't be visible, more or less, it will only work as a scaffold for gluing on pieces. Alright, here I have the piece I made. It's about 4 cm long, so now you have a reference. So proceed by cutting away the edges of the piece. Here you want to create a roundish, elongated teardrop shape. That's the best way I can explain it. Depending on what material you are using, you might be able to form and bend it as I'm showing here. I get my foam from Bygmax in Finland. It's called Fin Foam. Ok, so that's about the shape we want to have. See how it looks like with the wings on, and then make any modifications you deem necessary. I thought it was a bit too thick, so I carved away some of the materials from the sides. Alright, that looks great. And yeah, if you have any ideas for alternative materials we can use for this, share them with the others in the comments below. I used PVA glue, but you should use something better. Apply your glue of choice where you want to attach the wings. You can place the wings quite far up the front of the body. It still looks a bit weird, but we'll add the head soon, and some other pieces. Doing this with PVA glue can be a bit tricky. I managed to pin down the wings using some needles. I'll just take away the needles now, and we can start making the head. First, I made a piece that looks good from the side. However, that is not enough. Using this piece as a template, I designed a cardstock cutout that can be folded into the head. Just one piece. I've done similar heads for some cool looking dragons I have made in older episodes. Usually I had to redo my designs and try again and again. This time I managed to get the head right on the first time. Smash like for the head. You'll see it soon. Cut out the headpiece carefully. As you can see, I was not careful and broke a bit off here. But that's fine. I'll just glue it back later. Bend the piece like this. This is easier if you have a ruler so you can get sharper bends. Remember to also bend the tips of the flames out. It will look much better once we paint this. Before doing anything else, I glued back the piece that I broke off while being a careless noob. Good. Take some of that foam that we used earlier. It's going to fill the head and work as a neck. Remember, this is not rocket science. You should be able to just eyeball the right angle and width of the piece. Like I did. I just cut away the extra bit here and then applied glue. I held it in place for a while, then let the glue dry. Alright, that looks pretty good. While the glue dries, it's time to make the tail. I cut out the design I made for the tail. Let's see if it looks good. I then made some small adjustments here. When bending the feather tips of the tail, I thought it would look good if some are bent up and others are bent down. If you want, you could create a tail that has really long feathers. That might look even better. Once you think the tail is good, you can just glue it on the foam piece. There we go. We will cover the gaps later in this video. Now back to the head. Shape the neck by cutting away foam until it is somewhat round. And again, this is not precision work. The gaps will be covered later. Now you will need to fit the head to the body. Make a cut here and here to create a good flat surface for the glue. Here you could stick in a toothpick to make the head stay in place before the glue dries. Next, we will make the legs and talons that will be glued down here. To make the talons or claws, take some toothpicks and break the ends like this.
I made a total of 8 talons, there we have them. Quick and easy. The legs will be stuck into the foam, so it's easier if they are sharp. I made my leg sticks 2 cm long. We will use a glue gun to attach the parts. Just add a bit of glue on the longer piece here. Then add the talons. If you're as slow as I was, the glue will probably cool down before you're ready. You can use the tip of the glue gun to reheat it, and you're good to go. Alright, that looks a bit messy for now. Now you just add the talon on the back side and it should be done. Then cut away the extra glue and clean it up. There we go. Just one more step for the legs. Break the leg like this, not completely. Then cover the entire thing with glue. This will add some strength and texture. Then we want to figure out the best position to stick in the legs. I think this is good. To make it stronger, you can also add more glue later. At this stage, the bird looks a bit goofy. But don't worry, there are still some parts we need to add. If you happen to see some thinner cardstock pieces falling apart, you can fix it with a bit of glue, like this. Let's cut out some smaller flames. This step is surely the most fun after painting. So here you wanna cut many different shaped and sized, long, wavy and pointy bits that will look like flames. Just start gluing them on. The first thing we need to do is to cover up the sides. It looks a bit skinny, don't you think? As you place the pieces, you can move them around and see what looks best. My way of doing this was to add longer pieces along and under the wings. Then I added smaller pieces that point down. The point is to create some volume for the body. This is how I made it on the other side. How will you make it? Now we can start working with the bigger piece that will be glued on the back. You can also find this piece in the template. I carefully cut out this piece and then I bent all of the tips up. Remember to only put glue on the front half of this piece. You want the tips of the flames to be free, like this. Alright, this is starting to look really good. I held it down for a while, and when the glue had dried, I proceeded by placing smaller bits on this piece. Sort of like a line in the middle of the piece. Before moving to the details of the wings, I will add more of the little flames wherever needed. And we'll make sure that everything is looking fantastic. Alright, at this point I could barely wait to start painting this thing. But first, let's add the wing details here. This is the design I came up with for the wing details. Cut out the piece and then check if it fits nicely. Yeah, that's good. Then we add glue. While gluing on this piece, try to bend the wing into a nice shape. When the glue dries, it will hold its shape pretty well. I'll just work on this for a while and then glue on the next piece. Now you can reinforce the wings with the same PVA glue we have been using. Get messy with your fingers, or then just use tools. You know, like regular people. Just cover the wings on both sides. Easy. With a stick and the glue, I made some textures on the lower side of the wing. But don't worry about it too much, you will probably only see the wings from the top. Your mom will be proud anyway. Here I'm testing if it's strong enough. It is. Now let's make the eyes. They are so small, it can be a bit tricky, but you can do this. Use a corner of cardstock, cut away a tiny bit first, then cut away the eye at an angle of about 30 degrees. There we have the two eyes. To glue them on, I added a bit of glue using a stick. I placed the eye using tweezers. Before the glue dries, you have a moment to reposition the eye. There we go, here is the other eye. 
Now that I look at them, they seem a bit off. I made the eyes a bit smaller and then cut away this corner. Before moving on, make sure that the eyes are symmetrical. So you wanna paint this thing and make it look burning hot. Start by getting some bright and yellow paint. Here I'm just using some cheap acrylic paints, so if you're a miniature painter, you should have something much better. Proceed by covering the entire miniature with the yellow paint. When painting this first layer, some of the material might get soggy, so be careful that you don't break or bend anything. However, once the yellow has dried, it gets a lot stronger. These are the colors that will carry us to the end. Some red, yellow, it doesn't have to be evil though, and also some black. And I'll be using this medium sized brush, let's just keep it simple. I mixed a bit of red into the yellow. With the yellow orange color, I started covering all of the outer edges. Then I moved towards the inner areas of the miniature, applying less coverage. The idea is that you want the inner parts of the flames to stay yellow, and then gradually become more orange and red as they fade. Keep painting with an orange color now. You can use a mix of dry brushing and applying full coverage. I applied almost full coverage to all of the outer edges and feathers, if you can call them that. With the orange, you can also start defining the edges of the piece we glued here on the wing. Alright, this is looking good. Now we start working with red. You can get some really great details by painting these thin streaks of red. The little piece on the wing also starts looking great as you paint it with red. I tried to paint the head so that it transitions from yellow to red from the beak. The beak should look really hot once we're done here. Once you are done with the red, mix yourself some dark red by adding some black. Now you don't want to have lots of paint on the brush. Using the dark red, work on the most outer edges wherever the heat of the flames fade. You can try to find red or orange spots on your phoenix. Apply a bit of paint on these. They will seem like cooler areas and they add a lot of contrast to the paint job. Just a moment and we'll finish the details on the flames. Let's paint the talons first. I applied all of the earlier layers of paint, from yellow to dark red. I thought it would look good if the talons become cooler as we move down, so I painted the ends of the talons with dark red and then applied a light coverage of black. I know that white fire is pretty hot. So let's add some white. I used a ballpoint gel pen for this. This is the first time I've tried this in miniature painting. I colored the eyes first. The idea was to create a glowing eye that is white in the center. I think it worked out well. I also remember telling you that I wanted the beak to be glowing hot. So I added white on it as well. Take your white and start working on the most yellow areas. To add more contrast and heat, carefully paint a bit on the most yellow and hot areas. So I tried a few different things. I figured that painting one edge of a longer flame like this looks really good. So now you can create a phoenix bird that is even hotter than I. Or then you can apply these techniques for painting other things. Or building anything. No, it doesn't need a base yet. So if you're a huge nerd like me and want to use this for your tabletop games, this works fine without a base. But of course, we will make one later. I'm really happy with this phoenix, so tell your nerd friends that now is the time to start making your own miniatures. Press that like and tell me what you think about this project. And subscribe if you already haven't. As a dear subscriber, you will always get the full experience with ad-free videos. I keep my episodes ad-free for the first day, so click that bell and enable notifications. Because ads suck, but then again, getting food on the table is also pretty nice. All of this helps, but you can also support the making of these videos on Patreon. On Patreon, you can see behind the scenes images and sneak peeks of my work. So go check it out if you like the way I threw away my academical career for making little toys on YouTube. <laughs> That's the best way you can help me out in the making of these videos. With a pledge of just one silver, you have my eternal gratitude. Look at this guy. He can't attack now, but now he can. Hit the wing or the head. Thanks for watching, happy crafting and see you in the next episode.